Let's talk about what I read in the month of April. When I'm looking back at this list, I'm also like, did I read that book? What was that book about? So let's see. Hi, my name is Jeanette. I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. So today I'm going to talk about the 10 books I read in the month of April. Okay, so I also participated in Katie's Shower Me With Flowers Read-a-thon for the month. Um, Katie is from the channel Paperbacks and Ponytails, so I will link her channel below. The read-a-thon was only going on for April, but go check her out anyways. She always has some great suggestions. So before I get into talking about each individual book I read, I'm going to go over the 10 prompts that she had and what I read for the 10 prompts. Now there are some repeats here, so I did use certain books for multiple times for these prompts, but she didn't say you couldn't, so. Okay, so for prompt number one, prompt number two, and prompt number three, they're all the same book. So prompt number one is a character who is royalty, prompt two is a book with a married couple, and book number three is a book with a wedding. So for that book, I use Sunburst by Susan May Warren. So we are following, I've just lost her name, Naomi, whose uncle is the king in Nigeria. So there's the royalty. Then Naomi and Ranger end up getting married. So there is your, mar and then you're following them. For most of the story, they are married. So you are following a married couple. Then we see the wedding happen between Naomi and Ranger. So there's the wedding. Okay, so prompt number four is a Fortune 400 character or a character who is wealthy and in society. So for that one, I put in The British Booksellers by Christy Cameron. Again, I've lost the main character's name. Wow, what is with me in character names? But the main female character, Char Charlotte, yes, I think it's Charlotte, um, comes from a family with wealth and they want her to marry into another family that is wealthy. And so there's the family of wealth or in society. Okay, then prompt number five is a character who is heartless or a villain. Okay, I read a few books with some villains, but the one that I thought of was The Runaway Jury by John Grisham. There is really nobody, well, an exception, and I'll talk about it when I talk about it a little bit further, but there's hardly anybody to root for in this book. It is full of villains. Okay, then number six, a character goes on an adventure. So again, I slotted in Sunburst, because we are following Ranger and Naomi. So Ranger rescues Naomi from, she was kidnapped, and then they are going on, basically going on an adventure. They're racing through Nigeria, trying to meet up with Ranger's team to come out of the country, get out of the country. And so there is, we are following them on an adventure as they go from one side of the country to the other side of the country. Okay, then for number seven, a mother-daughter or a mother-son story. So for that one, I wrote down If For Any Reason by Courtney Walsh because we are following Emily and her mother, Isabel. But Emily lost her mother when she was 12 years old. This is now 18 years later. And Emily has a book of letters from her mother that she reads throughout. And then there are flashback scenes that provide us kind of Emily's parents' story. So there is both a mother and a daughter story being told in this. Then number eight was to read a romance. Well, I read a few of them, but I wrote down The Saturday Night Supper Club by Carla Lorando because this is a contemporary romance. And then number nine is a flawed character and again, I put down If For Any Reason by Courtney Walsh 
because Emily is trying to live the way her mother has directed her to live through these letters that her mother wrote 18 plus years ago and kind of there's that one point that she wrote when she was 25 years old and you're living by them to the letter so Emily's a little bit flawed and not living for herself I wasn't really sure what to put down for this prompt. It kind of left me stumped a bit. <laughs> okay, and then number 10 is a hero who doesn't claim to be one. And for that, I put in Wind Sweat Way by Irene Hannon. This has a character of Jonathan, who really, he's a wounded warrior, has come back from serving and scarred. And then he steps in and helps Ashley. I'm horrible with character names. Um, helps Ashley and a bond forms and he is definitely a hero even if he doesn't think he is. Okay so that is what I read for the Shower Me With Flowers readathon. Okay now let's get in to kind of an overview of talking about the books I read and what books I would recommend that I really enjoyed. Okay so I need to go back to... Okay, and this is where my very first book of the month was Fragments of Fear by Carrie Stewart Parks. And I was like, what was this book about? It was so long ago I read it. <laughs> but when I looked at my notes, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> so I read this book for my new to me author vlog. So I will link that blog below. And so then that you are following my whole experience of discovering Carrie Stewart or, or reading my first Carrie Stewart Parks book and what I thought about this book. It is a mystery suspense. We are following Evelyn McTavish and Sawyer Price as they are kind of, there's a mystery going on. It does involve art. There are artifacts being found and then there's also basically Tavish first gets pulled into this because she gets a phone call from the pound saying we have your dog and she's like we don't have a dog well it's got your name in the chip and your phone number so then she tries to she goes collects the dog she recognizes the dog tries to return it to the owner finds the owner dead and then things go from there and somebody is now after her and then through the course of events, she meets Sawyer and things keep building. I was fully invested in the story and as much, I don't follow art a lot. I don't know much about it and stuff, but that did not take me out of the story. The only thing that I did struggle with in the story is there, it is set in New Mexico and there are times that somebody speaks Spanish to Tavish and I'm like, I have no idea what was said. However, it wasn't that hard to follow along because Tavish also had no idea what was said. So it was like she was trying to determine what was said to her. So I felt like Tavish in those moments. So I give this book four stars and I will definitely pick up more by Carrie Stewart Parks. Then the second book I read was Dear Henry, Love Edith by Becca Kisner. This is another book that I read in that vlog. So my full thoughts will be on that vlog. But let's just say I did not enjoy this book and at this point in time I don't really plan on reading more by her and I just I could not get behind the concept of the two characters lying to each other and the fact that they have moved into a house together yes separate floors but it's a guy and a girl and Yes, each of them think the other one is an older person, but they never even make an effort to try to meet. And that just, I don't know. And then there's a bunch of things that kind of add up that just, I didn't enjoy this book. Now, this is highly recommended by a lot of people. So it's a total personal preference. Just wasn't for me. Then they, I needed a book that I knew I was going to enjoy. And I just wanted kind of a palate cleanser. So then I read Calculated Revenge by Jill Elizabeth Nelson. This was a reread for me and I really enjoyed it just as much as I did the first time around. I read this in a day. It's a short book and we are following Lainey. Yes, 
Right. So we follow Lainey, who is a teacher at a school, and she comes out and discovers a backpack <laughs> on a playground. And she's like, wait, I recognize that backpack. She goes over to it, opens it, and it turns out to be from her sister, Grace, who went missing a number of years ago. And they never found her. And it's kind of like, okay, what is going on? She goes in and talks to Alex, the principal. Noah. I had one character name, right? <laughs> um, she goes and talks to Noah. And Noah has been the principal for a couple years, I think, at the school. But he has a background that nobody really seems to know. And so they kind of end up working together trying to figure out what's going on. The police and the FBI all get involved because they were all involved in the sister's disappearance years ago. And why all of a sudden has everything kind of resurfaced? I was fully invested in this story. As I said, I read in a day. I did not want to put it down. So I gave this one four stars. It is a quick read. It is quick romance. But I really enjoyed it. Then, continuing on my vlog for a new to me author, I read From a Distance by Tamara Alexander. This is book one of the Timber, I didn't write down the title name, Timber Reflections series, I think is what it's called. And so this is set in 1875, Colorado. We are following Elizabeth, who has arrived to Colorado under the disguise of taking photos of the area. She is a photographer and I really enjoyed like kind of learning about the photography of like at that time, right? Like the process that went through, the setting up, the developing of the photos, like that was really interesting. She has hired somebody to work for her who is the darker skin color and then they end up meeting Daniel who is kind of an, uh, how do you describe him? Maybe an outcast from the area kind of he doesn't live in the town, he kind of lives in the woods off, not really outcast per se, but he really like lives for himself. And so Elizabeth wants Daniel to take her on a tour through, like a tour, um, be the guide to go from where she is in Colorado to Mesa Versa, Mesa Verde, I'm not sure how to pronounce it and kind of the challenges of that at that time period and so that part was interesting but this story moved so slowly and then there was just some wording in it that I just felt really uncomfortable reading I did not like it um, this book again was not for me so my full thoughts are in that new to me author vlog which again I will link below and yeah that's, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that book. So then I picked up Wind Swept Way by Irene Hannon. This is book number nine in the Hope Harbor series. Again, this is a series that you can read as standalones. You are meeting brand new main characters, but characters from previous books do make appearances. I found that more characters from previous books made an appearance in this one than they've made in some other ones before. So we follow Ashley, who has arrived in Hope Harbor to try to connect with Rose, who owns this big estate in just like on the cliffs of Hope Harbor. And Rose has kind of been a recluse for a number of years. Everybody knows she's really wealthy, but nobody really knows her. She doesn't get involved in the community. Only really Charlie, the taco truck maker, really is the only one that really has communication with her. Ashley and Rose kind of come up with this plan to bring people to, what's it called? To the estate. I can't think of what the name of it is. I did not write it down. Um, so then Jonathan, who is a landscaper, gets hired and Jonathan is the wounded warrior that is injured so he keeps his identity kind of covered up. He wears a hat and sunglasses and a scarf and stuff to kind of hide his injuries from others and he again has been kind of reclusive from other people not getting involved in the community. He's worried that people will look at him 
and stare and stuff because of his injuries. And so Ashley has hired him and they get to know him and then we also see Ashley hire BJ who is a contractor we've met in previous books so there's characters kind of again and we're just following the story of these characters kind of finding a place and their journey and can Jonathan kind of open up to others will Rose open up to others can actually like bring community to them. I really enjoyed following this story and I was fully invested in these characters. And yes, there is romance that happens in it. So I do have a quote to share from this one. And there was a couple of things that really stood out to me is, one, it seems to me that once you commit to someone, you have to be ready to adapt to changed circumstances. And then, Putting fears and concerns on the table is better than spending sleepless nights. In other words, communicate. So yes, I highly recommend this one. I really enjoyed returning to Hope Harbor and I cannot wait to read the next book that is already out. Okay. Then I finished Sunburst by Susan May Warren. This is book number two of the Sky King Ranch series. And we are following Ranger Kingston, who is the second brother. And this one, we follow Ranger arriving in Nigeria to try to rescue this group. He's a Navy SEAL, right? No, he was a Navy SEAL. He is not. He's working on just this mission team. Um, he arrives there and uh, in the midst of this rescue that's happening from the, these people that have been kidnapped, he runs into Naomi and now Naomi and Ranger have a past history and he didn't know she was there and then they get out and due to circumstances happening a fake marriage starts and then we see the wedding happen and blah 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 and I really enjoyed the Nigeria setting this the action that was going on like they're trying to escape from these kidnappers that are after them and stuff and the kind of even the posing as man and wife to try to protect each other I really enjoyed and then when she arrives at her uncle's place and kind of just the events that keep going on I was really really invested in then it skips like the next chapter we're in Alaska following a completely different character who we haven't met and I was so confused like it was like what huh who is this person how are they relevant to this story eventually it all comes together and we know parts of the story right like it made sense eventually but at first it was like what and then Naomi and Ranger do end up in Alaska at Sky King Ranch with his brothers and his dad and this other person that we didn't know who they were or I didn't know who they were and then kind of it from that point on it picks up the continuing story from book one now I didn't really enjoy book one and I didn't really care about the continuing story I mean I didn't know the story was really going to continue until it came and it was like oh and then this book doesn't like that storyline does not end this book ends with kind of what happens next and then kind of going in to lead into book three. So we know who book three is going to follow, the third Kingston brother and this mystery person and kind of what we have hints to what is going to be happening to them, who's after them, kind of what's going on, right? So while I liked that aspect of it, I was also like, I'm, I'm tired of Russian characters. I'm tired of Alaska setting. I just, I'm at the point I want to just finish the series and be done with it. I'm just not, this has not drawn me in like a lot of Susan May Warren's books have in the past. I don't know. Then on the relationship side, the romance side, the fake marriage side, there were some scenes that kind of happened that was like, um, you remember this is a fake marriage, right? 
they just I don't know that just bothered me but I did give this book three stars because as I said I was fully invested in the Nigeria storyline of this it was once it arrived in Alaska kind of the last third that I just didn't care that much about so okay then I read The British Booksellers by Christy Cambron. I had this as an advanced reader copy. It is now officially out. And this one is set, it is a dual timeline, it is set in Coventry, England, 1914 and 1940. So we are following the characters of Charlotte and Amos, are the kind of the primary 1914 characters. Charlotte comes from a wealthy family. Amos is a tenant farmer's son. The two of them have grown up as kids together and have really formed a relationship. Then stuff kind of leads to events happen and they were hoping to get married and stuff, but then the other events happen. World War I happens. Amos goes off to fight. Charlotte ended up getting married and Amos ends up working on battle along with Charlotte's husband and then kind of events unfold and we don't know exactly what happened. Then in the 1940 storyline we are following Jacob who is a lawyer from America and he has come to Coventry, England to serve documents on Eden who is Charlotte's daughter. Now Amos and Charlotte are still alive at this time and we are following them. Now in 1940 Amos and Charlotte both own bookstores across from each other and kind of are known as competitors and don't work together or nothing. They no longer have the friendship they had but we have no idea what happened to cause everything that's led up to this point in time. And now Jacob arrives on the scene it's like what? <laughs> I really enjoyed this story like really enjoyed it and so now this is the start of World War II and so Coventry is being bombed by different blitz and it's kind of known as the forgotten blitz and Eden is trying to save the Holt Manor and grounds and land girls from London have come out to the country to work for them and work with them and we are following all these characters kind of trying to work together to save the bookstore and the, the house like the estate and stuff but the one thing that I struggled with this book is there are so many characters because you've got all the land girls the different tenant farmers then the main four characters I was just sometimes it was like wait who's that person what's their relationship to so that is the one thing that it was just like okay and but I really enjoyed we are following two romances that happen through this and I really enjoyed the way the 1914 timeline and the 1940 timeline kind of came together and things are revealed that I did I kind of suspected but weren't really sure of what was going on and I just really really enjoyed this story I will definitely pick up more by this author. Okay, then I finally finished The Runaway Jury by John Grisham. So this was a carryover from March. And I just wasn't, I could not just sit down and read it. So I kind of looked through and I'm like, okay, wherever I was at a certain point, I don't know when I started this exactly, but then it was like, okay, if I read 30 pages a day, for the rest of the month I will finish it by the end of the month. So that is what I did until I got to like the last 100 pages probably. It was like okay now I need to know what's going on. I need I was fully invested in the story. So I do remember watching the movie but we are following a different trial in this book than the movie. This is talking about tobacco and kind of the harm of tobacco is nicotine is nicotine addictive or not can the tobacco companies be held responsible if somebody gets sick from it 
all kind of all that. So I mean, there's a lot of like political stuff going on in this book. Then we are following a jury. So we're following kind of both sides of the case. We've got the defendant and the prosecutor. Then we are following a jury consultant who is working for one side and trying to like kind of encourage like these people should be on the jury. They're doing like digging all the dirt on these people. And yes, we can influence this one, blah, blah, blah. And then they kind of take it a bit too far personally. But then inside the jury, there's also somebody that is trying to manipulate the jury that is not working with the jury consultant. So there is a few bad guys in this book. And that's why I say there's really hardly anybody to root for in this book because they all have ulterior motives. They're kind of all working for themselves or for various reasons, not in a positive way. However, the more I think about it, I want to root for some of the jury members who are being manipulated by somebody. If they're not being manipulated by the one that's on the jury, they're being manipulated by the jury consultant and his kind of team outside. And some of them will kind of bow to the pressure and some of them do stand up for themselves. But do they stand up for themselves because of like their moral compass and what their heart's telling them? or because they stand up to the, the guy on the jury because of the outside pressures. Like it was, it really got me thinking and especially like on the tobacco case itself. Now, this was written in the 90s. So there are references in here that are dated because now like, at least not here, I don't think you can either in majority of the states, is you can't buy cigarettes in a vending machine, right? You have to have ID and be of age and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, there's a little, a few things that have changed over the years. So that's why I say it is a bit outdated. I did give it three stars because as I said, by the time I got to the end, I needed to know what was gonna happen. And then kind of the twist at the end was like, Oh, okay. So what they did was wrong, but did they do it for the right motives? And I, yeah, it really got me thinking. Okay, then I finished The Saturday Night Supper Club by Carlo Rando. This is book one of the Supper Club series. We are following chef Rachel Bishop, who is working at a five-star restaurant. A review gets written and then a kind of a rebuttal to that review gets written by Alex. Yes, <laughs> did I have that name right? <laughs> um, gets written by Alex and he kind of throws Rachel's life into chaos, not on purpose. He was trying to defend her, didn't things happen? And Rachel and Alex have never met. They do eventually meet and start working together and they form this supper club. And so we're following kind of the developing of this and does a, like a friendship between two strangers form? Can this business work? And kind of where is it going? Rachel's trying to find another job. And I just, I really liked the characters in this one. And not just the two main characters themselves. Rachel has two girlfriends who just like are s similar to like kind of her work life because being a chef in a five star restaurant is full demand. She's in the kitchen all day, every day kind of. And then there's a baker who has worked with her but also has another job now. And then a kind of a marketing consultant who also has a high demand job. And, but the three girls, no matter what they are, they will get together and support each other as much as they can whenever they can. So like Rachel just sends a text and say, I need to talk to you, can we? And they get together. And I just loved the support of the friends in this one. And then Alex, best friend, very similar, same way. They can talk about anything. Again, they don't have a lot of stuff in 
similar, they come from kind of different backgrounds, but they're just support each other. And then there's Alex and his sister, who again, just like, what a great big brother. But then she like speaks up for herself and kind of teases him, especially when Rachel is involved and stuff. I just, yeah, this was a really fun read. I highly recommend this one. And it's kind of finding a purpose in life and why are you doing things? So I did write down a couple of quotes and this one is the one that has really stuck with me is if God wanted you to be anything other than who and what you are, he would have made you that way. Do you want me to repeat that? I'm going to repeat that. If God had wanted you to be anything other than who you are and what you are, he would have made you that way. Yes, I cannot wait to move on to the next book because I know we're following one of the girls. Okay, and then the final book that I read this month is If For Any Reason by Courtney Walsh. This is book one of the Nantucket Love Story. And we are following Emily, who has come back to Nantucket after 18 years away. She la last was on Nantucket when she was 12 years old when her mom passed away. Her mom was a single mother and they were living with her grandparents. So her grandparents took her in. Her grandparents have money and have had money. Like Emily's mom grew up with money. Then her best friend at the time was Hollis, kind of the next door neighbor who his parents or his dad worked for. So he was below their station because um, he, he was more of a caretaker, not somebody with money. And so when they were young, he was her best friend. He is now back on Nantucket. She run, they run into each other and now he is not lacking funds. His family is no longer lacking funds. And they just, it doesn't, I mean, the fun thing doesn't matter at all at this point. They're 30 years old. And Hollis has a 12 year old daughter who is living with him for the summer. And he is trying to connect with her, but just cannot connect with her. And then all of a sudden his daughter connects with Emily right away. And so that just creates a bond between them to begin with. But Emily and Hollis, when they were 12 years old, they were able to share like anything. They could, one of them would say something and the other one just couldn't hold back. And now 18 years later, it's still the same thing. Hollis is able to get Emily op to open up to him in a way that Emily has never opened up to people. And then the same thing reversed. I really enjoyed following, like watching kind of the friendship developed between these two characters and watching Hollis's relationship with his daughter improve. And then we have Hollis's two siblings and his parents, like it's a whole family vacation at Nantucket and just kind of watching the interaction and the way that the family just kind of welcomes Emily back after 18 years away, just makes her part of the family again. And Emily has never felt like a family with anybody since she's lost her mom. Things are a little bit strained between her grandmother and she's never put down roots anywhere. She's just constantly traveling, whatever. Her basically her plan is to fix up the cottage and sell it and move on. And well, things change. And we kind of we really watch Emily that things are better can be better for her. She can be more settled in life. And then we have letters from Emily's mom, Isabel, that were written to Emily as Emily was a child growing up. And so now these letters are 18, 20 some years, 25 years old, um, because they were written before her mom passed away, obviously. And I just really enjoyed writing some of the letters, but some of the letters were a little misguided due to the age of Emily's mom at the time, right? And then we also follow, we see the relationship between Emily's parents, how that started, what happened, and kind of we get answers to it. And can Emily find peace? She's never known her father. Can she find her father and get to know him? 
I just, I really enjoyed it. At times though, it does move a bit slow that I found myself easily distracted at times. I just wasn't fully invested, but I did enjoy, and there are, um, Emily is overseeing a children's production at the local theater. And so there's a lot of theater aspects in it. And that was really interesting other than I don't know the show they were putting on. <laughs> it is a well-known show. I just don't know it. And so there was comes, I don't know what that part is. Like I didn't recognize like that, right? But other than that, I did really enjoy this story and I have already picked up book two. And at this point, I'm enjoying that. I'm much more invested in those characters than I was in this one. But I did really enjoy this one. It is a sweet read filled with some family drama. Can they get through it, move past it, reconnect, find hope? I gave it four stars and I would recommend it. And it's a great beach read. I mean, she's sitting on a beach or laying on a beach. So yes. Okay, so that is what I read in the month of April. And I would say my favorite book, it'd be hard. Um, yeah, I would say my favorite book, my favorite book was The Saturday Night Supper Club by Carla Lorando. I just really, really enjoyed the characters and the friendships the most in this one. And I'm not a big foodie. So kind of the fancy food was above me, but I really enjoyed the characters. Please tell me what your favorite book for the month of April was. I would love to chat in the comments below. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. I would love it if you would like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Bye.